Squad Mobility is bringing a compact city car that charges itself on direct solar energy to the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, part of the Dutch delegation. Welcome back to Textination. I'm Fred Fishkin, and joining us from Squad Mobility is co-founder Robert Hoovers. Good to see you, Robert. Hi, Fred. How are you doing? Terrific. And you have some sun coming through the window there, which is great. So tell us tell us yeah. about Squad. I'll just open the window a little bit. And we, we are in, uh, in Amsterdam, close to Amsterdam. So it's a sunny day today. But Amsterdam, as you know, is quite uh, northern. So uh, the sun is... Uh, uh, and especially now in December, it's, uh, it's quite low. So um, it's limited to the amount of sun that we get here. So, yeah. Uh, so what did you ask? Uh, tell me about Squad. Yeah, tell us about Squad. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, me and my partner, Chris, uh, we founded Squad in 2019. Uh, we both worked at Lightyear. Lightyear is uh, developing, uh, uh, say, a luxury solar car. And we uh, basically split off to uh, develop our own uh, solar car because we, we saw a great opportunity uh, in a compact uh, uh, car area. Uh, so we developed what we like to call the, the world's first solar city car, a very compact, uh, little uh, low-speed vehicles yeah, uh, charged by, uh, by solar from the roof of the vehicle. So tell us how this is this is different in a number of ways from a traditional car. Um, and one of the things that sets it apart is the price here, right? Yeah, so our, our goal is to really make solar mobility very affordable and attainable for everybody. Well, not everybody, but just a group as large as possible uh, in the world. Um, and the nice part is that solar is actually more affordable than batteries. So we saw an opportunity to uh, increase or, or, or to, to develop the solar charging aspect um, and uh, use this opportunity to limit the amount of batteries a little bit so that we can have the same experience uh, and less charging, uh, depending on where you live, of course, uh, with the help of solar. So we had to first uh, increase the solar yield. So uh, make uh, the, the solar panel as big as possible, basically, uh, and decrease the energy usage of the vehicle. So the, the vehicle, the, the squad is a very efficient vehicle uh, with uh, wheel motors and a very light, lightweight, um, so that you can actually uh, have a very significant uh, amount of solar range like we like to call it. The solar range is the uh, amount of kilometers that you can, or miles that you can reach with the solar charge per day. Well, in, in, a, in a nice, in a good case, like Las Vegas is where we're going in the next CES 2023, um, as you know, as you know, uh, Las Vegas gets a lot of sun. Uh, an average user could actually drive the whole year round without charging once. In Las Vegas. So, uh, but this is obviously a very good case. In Amsterdam, it's a lot less, but it, it still saves you a tremendous amount of charging uh, per year um, having the solar on the roof. 
And pricing for these vehicles starts at under six thousand three hundred dollars. Well, no, over over six thousand six thousand two hundred fifty euros, excluding tax. And our base model is also excluding doors. But the doors are an option. Uh, so in the Netherlands, where we have twenty percent, twenty one percent tax, uh, you would pay eight thousand five hundred, including tax and including doors, uh, for the vehicle. So, but I, in my opinion, still extremely affordable. And this is, so let's describe it for people. We're going to show images and, and videos as well as we go along here. This is a, a two-seater with a top speed of about 25 miles per hour. Uh, yeah, out of my, uh, yeah, 25 mi miles per hour. That's, that's, that's in, in the U.S. It would uh, count as a low-speed vehicle of um, uh in Europe, it would be uh, 45 kilometers an hour, and we're also developing uh, an L7 version. In Europe, you have the L6 and the L7 categories, and the L7 version can go up to 70 kilometers per hour. Uh, it's a two-seater, uh, and the L7 could uh, also hold four people. Uh, we are developing a slightly a larger version, which can hold two kids in the back. Um, so two grown, two adults in the front and two kids in the back. And this is very small, which is great for parking and, uh, and, and lightweight as well. You said, right? Yeah, it's, it's very lightweight. It's only 350 kilos. Um, it's very small. You can even cross park it on an average parking spot. There's only two meters in length. So it's specifically made for inner city usage or, uh, maybe, maybe campuses, uh, maybe uh, gated communities uh, in the us i know you have a lot of these uh, what they like to call golf cart communities uh where the the, the the speed limit is low but in europe uh, a lot of we have these very old cities with these small centers uh where we have huge parking and congestion issues so the size uh, really matters there uh, so they fit crosswise on, on, a, on a standard parking spot. You could, so you can park three squats on one single parking spot. And how far can you drive on a, on a charge? So uh, the, the maximum range of the squats, and th that's what we call battery range. So we have two types of range. You have a solar range and a battery range. Uh, the maximum battery range of the squat is a 100 kilometer. Yeah. So uh, we are using swappable batteries in the squad. So you have four swappable batteries that are actually portable and exchangeable. So you can hot swap them. So that means you can swap the battery while everything is engaged. Um, and the four swappable batteries offer 25 kilometers per battery. So that's 100 kilometers in total. And then additionally to that, you can charge on the sun. That would be in Amsterdam up to 22 kilometers per day. And in Las Vegas, it would be around 32 kilometers per day that you can charge. And of, and of course, you can plug into an EV charging station. As yes, well. you can plug it on, you know, 220 or 110 in the US and, uh, or an EV charging station uh, plug. So that's another alternative. So you basically have three ways to charge. The solar charging is always, so we only sell solar cars. So sometimes people ask, so do you also sell them without the solar? No. We only have solar. And as you said before, the, the doors are an option. People may not be used to hearing things like that. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, well, that's, that, that's interesting. That actually came a little bit from where we came from. So we looked for the most uh, efficient option. And as the air conditioning, especially on such a small vehicle, the air conditioning is actually a large, very large portion of your energy usage, we figured... Well, actually, that would be way better to leave the doors out instead of the air conditioning. Well, obviously, that's not always a good solution because sometimes it's simply too hot. But if if the temperature is somewhere 30 degrees, then it's totally fine to drive around without without doors. So that's basically the without doors version is basically our our concept of the uh, convertible, so to say. Uh, there's a lot of uh, interest for the no doors version from uh, resorts. Uh, seaside, uh, vacation, uh, 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 on-premise uh, locations. Um, yeah, there are all kinds of um, uh, 
places where people like to, to, to have the option without doors. But obviously, in the public space, a lot of people like the version with doors. So we decided to make the doors optional and uh, you can take them off. Just like you have, uh, the, do, you, do you remember that Jeep where you could take the doors off? It works exactly the same way. You can just uh, um, carry the door, doors up a little bit and then uh, uh, take, them, take them off. And is there heat and air conditioning in the vehicle? Yeah, heating is standard and air conditioning is an option. Is optional. How much can people carry in one of these? Can could I go grocery shopping? Yeah, there's quite a quite a big space in the back because the vehicle is a little bit squarish, as you as you as you saw. The, the reason why it's a little bit squarish is actually to give the solar panel as much space as possible. But it also uh, results in in quite a big interior. The people that take place in our vehicle, and you can if you want uh, at the CES uh, in the beginning of January. Uh, they all say the same. Wow, what's this vehicle huge for such a small, you know, small dimensions? So it's from the inside, it's really big. And actually, in, in the in the back, it's quite a big space where you can carry all kinds of normal between brackets uh, a cargo that you would carry, you know, groceries, uh, your tennis gear, or uh, a, a musical instrument, or you know, stuff like that that you would normally carry to. Uh, sports clubs or uh, shopping or what whatnot. And then you can um, fold the uh, passenger seat totally flat. Uh, and the back of the passenger seat is like also a, a cargo tray. So you can also uh, carry uh, additional stuff there. So we get also a lot of requests for inner city repair services and, and uh, dis distribution of all kinds of goods uh, into the city centers, uh, medical help, uh, you know, uh, all all kinds of uh, services uh, in city centers. What about the safety of these vehicles? Obviously, people would be concerned about that being so small and light. True, true. Yes, of course. Um, so we went over and above. So what is uh, mandatory in this uh, in this segment in Europe? The L6 and L7 uh, are very limited in, in, in the mandatory safety regulations. However, uh, we decided to, to go for a full crash structure in the front and the rear. Uh, and we have a, a, a full roll cage as well, that, which is actually visible from the outside. It's actually a full roll cage, uh, which protecting uh, the people sitting in the car. The most important aspect, however, for safety is the speed. So that's the reason uh, why we chose for low speed L6, that is uh, 45 kilometer an hour or 22 miles or 25 miles. And uh, the L7 in Europe could legally go up to 90 kilometers an hour. And we decided, we decided not to do that. We decided to limit it at 70 kilometers an hour uh, only for safety reasons. And when will people be able to get these, to drive them? Yeah, so uh, the planning now is to go into production at the end of this year, uh, at the end of 2023, uh, with deliveries in 24. Um, so yeah, that's the planning. You know, the, the, these, these uh, processes are something sometimes hard to predict because not so much for the development. Development is quite good to predict, quite easy to predict, but also for the financing surrounding them. So you see a lot of these starting car companies having difficulties to, to attain or to uh, stick to their timeline. Uh, and that's of, obviously uh, often, often case the reason, uh, because you don't, you don't only have to build a car, but also a company as well at the same time. Interesting, very interesting. Are you looking at any of the technologies, uh, ADAS systems, as well as uh, potentially down the road, any automated driving? Yeah, it's our, our long-term vision, and that's more of, a, you know, in the clouds, uh, but that, that's our, that's, that's our long-term vision is to have a fully automated fleet, uh, driving shared fleet around the city, moving autonomously, from location with high demand to other locations with high demand. So that's our, that's our long-term vision. 
You know, in the midterm, we like to offer remote control because the squad is specifically also designed for sharing platforms. And why remote control? Because if you are in, say, a city of a million uh, people, then you need maybe uh, 500 to 1,000 vehicles. And there's a big chance that some of these vehicles will now and then stand in the way of uh, fire department, ambulance, police. You have to move them out of the way. So ideally, you would have remote control, you know, with the control from a central operator in the city, you know, moving the vehicle with remote control uh, uh, slowly out of the way. I mean, like really slowly, like one kilometer an hour or something like that uh, out of the way. Uh, just to be able to respond quickly without having to go there. So that's our mid-term mid, uh, uh, strategy. The long-term strategy is, yeah, to go fully autonomous. That's really uh, not on the short term. And people can reserve one without having to put money down in the United States? Is that right? <clears throat> yeah. For Europe, uh, there is. Uh, we have three reservations, the 50 and the 500 and the 5,000 euro. 5,000 for the first 100, the 500 for the first 1,000, and the 50 for the remainder. Uh, outside Europe, uh, we have decided to offer the reservations for free because, uh, you know, the first market where we go to is Europe. So outside Europe, it's not totally clear where we go first. So to have better insight uh, where we should go first, where the biggest market is, we decided to offer the pre-orders for free outside Europe. To, to have a, a good market indication. Uh, thus far, we got a whole lot of uh, reservations from the US, specifically Florida, uh, Atlanta, uh, California, of course, uh, Texas, you know, the Southern states. For more information, where can people go? Yeah, the, the website squadmobility.com. Uh, there you can find all the information. Uh, you can reach us directly uh, via the website. You can do your pre-orders. Uh, so, as I said, for free. We will be going to the CES the beginning of January uh, to show the vehicle. We, the vehicle is already there. It is already in Las Vegas. You will show it there. Uh, we hope to find partners for the U.S. market, you know, to bring the car to the U.S. market. Uh, we're also hoping to interest investors uh, and to find clients, both B2B as well as B2C. Uh, so, yeah, that's all. Terrific. Plan. Again, it's squadmobility.com. Robert Hoover's, thank you for spending time with us. Thank you, Fred. <laughs>